Good afternoon and welcome back. I'm Crystal Booker. We are all aware of the tragic injury regarding Kevin Ware and his absence for the remainder of the season. With that being said, the athletic competition is something every athlete enjoys. But when injuries occur, athletic trainers spring into action. Reporter Javion Garrett has the story. In a flash, a sports injury can happen. During a game in the NCAA tournament, Kevin Ware experienced a devastating injury that the whole country witnessed. This is a tibia fracture and a fibula fracture as well. Um, luckily, he didn't, he didn't bleed a lot. Um, even with this being an open fracture, um, which that open fracture is when the bone uh, sticks through the skin. What is sometimes overlooked is the job of the athletic trainers and how quick they go into action when injury occurs. It is important for them to be prepared and ready so that the athlete gets the best treatment they can. Like they covered it up, they didn't let him really look at the injury. Um, he was obviously unable to walk so they, so they had to immobilize him. So that, that can take a while to get him off the court. Only time and where know just when he will be ready again. But thankfully his expenses will be paid by the University of Louisville. Louisville will cover his expenses, um, just, just as our athletes here are covered under insurance if they're injured here. Reporter for Wentham Close Up, I'm JB Garrett. Louisville went on to win the national championship with wear on the sidelines. He is expected to make a full recovery by next season. Injuries aren't the only problems athletes face when it comes to them doing their job. Apparently, so is facing something just as troubling. One baseball player has fought diversity his whole life. Zoe Irizarry introduces us to this remarkable young man. As the temperatures are getting warmer, baseball season is beginning. This year, Winthrop baseball has something unique, an outfielder who's partially deaf. I'm like 97%, 97% deaf. Looking at him, you'd never know. He's developed a skill that allows him to have regular conversations. But I can read lips really well, so that's how I know what he's saying. Conversing is one thing, but things like listening to the radio are very different for Patrick. What I hear in music is I hear like people talking, singing, but I don't hear, I don't know what they're saying unless I look up the lyrics and they kind of put it together. But I just basically listen to the beat of it and the rhythm of it. He said he prefers upbeat music. I don't like listening to sad music because I'm not that kind of guy. I'm always a happy guy. And I don't like, I've never been that guy like, Oh, my girlfriend broke up with me and all that stuff. I'm, nah. He listens to music to pump him up before a game. Patrick has been playing baseball since he could walk. And while some might think being a deaf baseball player is hard, for Patrick, it's just part of who he is. For me, it's something I've done my whole life. And, like, it's just it's nothing different for me. Patrick's father instilled a positive attitude in him, and he's determined to achieve all his goals. People think that me being deaf is that it's going to bring me down, but I always try to work my way up and try to be better than everybody else. And Crystal, talking with him, he had such a great attitude, and I know that we can only expect great things from him in the future. With photographer Sheila Straub, this is Zoe Irizarry reporting for Winthrop Close Up. From basketball to baseball and now to golf, it seems like the spring sports are becoming more and more of the talk of the semester. Windrup's men's golf team has been on the roll by finishing near the top in several golf tournaments this season. Kristen Boyce took a tour on the green. Windrup's men's golf team has had major success this season. The Eagles have placed in the top five of seven tournaments, scoring 887 in the 18 team Sanford Intercollegiate and scoring 897 in the 16 team Pinehurst Intercollegiate. Ex-pro golfer and coach of the team shares his feelings on the team's success. Um, you know, seven events and seven top fives is uh, not many teams in the country that have done that to this to, to date. So um, we're pleased with the guys, the work they've put in, and uh, so we're still two weeks left. We've got to finish off what we started. The team has done well with staying in the top five but the golfers slipped to the 11th place while playing in the rain in a tournament at Furman University. Though the team fell a few places in their last tournament, they're still in high spirits and are confident to go to the Big South Conference. So everybody's had a little bit more motivation to play a little bit better and you've seen it on and off the course. 
I'm definitely excited about the success. Uh, we have a chance to go to regionals and see what happens from there. So if, as long as we play good at conference. Now the guys only have two weeks before the Big South Conference. We congratulate them on their success and wish them the best on their upcoming tournament. I'm Kristen Boyce, reporting for Winthrop Close Up. The men's golf team will play its final tournament before the Big South Conference when they take on the Coca-Cola Wofford Intercollegiate April 14th through April 16th in Spartanburg. We all think that sports and activities here on campus are only meant for the students that attend Winthrop, but reporter Alex Jones tells us about one class that offers children a chance to have fun and learn something as well. Every Friday, students taking the Physical Education 112 gather at the Student Activity Center to teach the children of the MacBeat program. The student teachers offer the kids a chance to have fun and play games. The kids are able to gain something extraordinary as a result. It is one of our first classes that our majors actually teach in. Uh, it's kind of a methods class for them, but it's their first experience with teaching children at all. The class does more than work with kids. We meet on Monday and Wednesday for about an hour and we go through all of their lessons and what they're going to be teaching and the content and so on. And we even practice on ourselves. Even though the kids are only with the student teachers for only an hour, what exactly are they able to gain from this weekly experience? They're, this is their first experience with leading and teaching lessons for children. So they're working on specific locomotor kinds of skills. Skills like skipping and hopping and jumping, uh, personal space issues. They have a lot of fun and they look forward to coming each week to spending time with them. The program has been a part of Winthrop for the past 15 years and is showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon. This is Alex Jones reporting for Winthrop Close Up. The class usually meets for two hours on Friday and so far the reception for the program has been positive. We've reached the end of our Eagle News, but stay with us for next week's show when we show how the Quidditch team goes for the World Cup. Dimitri is ready with your A&E News.